This oh, conference will now be recorded. <laughs> All right, start over. We will call the Bicycle Pedestrian Committee meeting on uh, Monday, August 14th to order. Um, roll call, please. Kelly Smith? Yes. 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 Kelly Jessica Atkinson. She's come here to come on her vehicle. Oh, okay. Dale Schmidt. I'm uh, here. Kim Chan. Here. Sharon Hall. Here. Um, stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, I have one action on the agenda. If I can have a motion to approve the agenda, I change that in your life. I have a motion to approve. Motion by Dale. Second, Second by Leroy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, actions on the minutes from July 10th, 2023. Any corrections to the minutes? I'm going, to, I'm going to replace somebody. 7A typo report should say repo. It says R E P O T should be report. <laughs> uh, somebody else used to do that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Gonna, She's gone. I, I was going to do it. You don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking your place. I have an amendment correction, too. Oh, oh, that's who you were referring to on here. Yeah. <laughs> I want to sing. Um, item B. Uh, what's it? Let me go back to my note just one second. Seven under the parking rec report. Um, the word update is in there. It's listed as two words. It should be one, I believe. I'm sorry, where are you? Just um, seven under park and rec report. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions or changes, anybody? Okay, with that, I would ask for a motion to approve minutes. I'll approve as amended. File motion to approve. Yeah. Second, yep. Leroy. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, 6A and 6 is comments from the public. Um, the comments must be limited to items that are not on the agenda. So if anybody's here to speak on an item that is on the agenda, we will open the floor at that time. Yes. Um, must state name and address. You, um, comments are limited to five minutes. The board's role was to listen and not discuss the item. Personnel issues cannot be discussed, and the board's not able to take action on this meeting. So with that, is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on something that is not on the agenda? We don't know what's on the agenda. I'm sorry, you should have a, are you, what are you here to speak in regard to? The glass, glass on Broadway, I knew. Um, um, Bob Arnold, what were you here to speak on? Oh, same. same thing. Okay, so that's all on, that's on the agenda. So you both will open the floor at that time. Okay. So here none, then we will continue on. Um, item seven is our reports and updates from our different committees. Um, welcome, Jessica. Um, start with Ashwala on public safety. Brian, I saw you sneak in. I don't know where you end up. Yeah, I'm here. back here. Okay. Any report, Brian? All right, uh, so for traffic enforcement activity, um, the traffic issues from this year, I don't have any new um, bicycle or uh, pedestrian vehicle collisions uh, to report since our last meeting. Um, this year, we do still have a trending increase compared to last year for traffic crashes. Um, we did have a bit of a hot spot over by uh, 172 Babcock, 172 Backland, which so that result itself. Uh, with better traffic flow over there. Um, our traffic enforcement activity is up. We are up uh, about 13% uh, with our citations um, this year as well. We do have uh, several people in the training pipeline right now and also recent retirements. So still looking to get uh, to the optimal staffing level where you can uh, implement that dedicated uh, traffic enforcement car uh, or that dedicated traffic enforcement uh, officer position. Um, just polishing up the uh, position description to encompass all the tasks that we want that uh, position to focus on with regards to traffic safety um, and uh, crash investigation as well. Uh, we are running a hiring process to uh, backfill some of the vacant spots that we have right now too. Um, we will be 
uh, doing a pedestrian uh, enforcement deployment, also known as a Frogger deployment, uh, at the end of the month on the 31st. Uh, and we'll be working with uh, uh, Wallow on that one. That's a, a countywide deployment. And we'll also be doing uh, a little bit more robust briefing and training prior to that one uh, to make sure that we are getting the most out of that deployment. Uh, other than that, traffic grants uh, continue on as they have uh, uh, throughout the year. Uh, we still got OWI enforcement grants. We did have one in the village this past uh, weekend. Um, we've got another one coming up uh, throughout the month. Uh, we've also got uh, speed enforcement deployments uh, countywide with a couple in the village this month. Those generally run uh, June, July, and August. Uh, and we still got our seatbelt uh, enforcement grants going on countywide as well. And usually we've got about one or two deployments of those within the village uh, throughout the uh, throughout each month. You mentioned that citations are up. Is that a reflection of more time spent enforcing or are drivers misbehaving? I'd say, uh, if I were to make a hypothesis, I'd say it's um, just more robust enforcement. We've really been trying to stress that and look at the uh, way to um, have our officers be more proactive with traffic enforcement. So. We've set some goals for that um, as far as directed patrols. We've also um, been looking at that as far as the evaluation process to make sure that officers are giving a honest day's uh, work patrol uh, directing it towards uh, traffic enforcement as well. Um, we've also got several newer officers that are very proactive when it comes to traffic enforcement. Um, and they've been doing uh, quite well at that, and taking a, a very proactive approach to things. Good. Yes, um, I live across the street from an retired police officer, and I thought the whole thing that you do the morning of the retirement was just super so cool. cool. Well, it's just really cool. 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 The whole neighborhood just loved it. I'm so excited about it. So I assume, uh, uh, yeah, over in Alton Station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, that's not going to lie, that's a loss. He was uh, a good employee, and he was uh, a former trooper, so obviously he's pretty well versed in traffic things. and. He was a very proactive worker right to the end. So sorry to see him go, but he's got a wonderful opportunity. Mm -hmm. Who was that? What job, sir? Was that? Kevin Puffin. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it, but they bring the new no, oh, yes, no. sirens. Yeah. It's very cool. They both very, very respectful. It's a little bit self determined, too. So every officer when they retire gets an option of whether they want. Well, if they want the yeah, caravan. So they want the caravan. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and we found with uh, you know people can live up to 15 miles outside the village. So those that live outside the village, we've had it before too, where they'll um, meet up at somebody's house, either a friend or a coworker in the village, and the caravan from there, or if it's just outside, we'll we'll get them in that way. But no, that was one thing that struck me when I started this department. I think it was a phenomenal tra uh, tradition. And I'm glad we continued it. Thank you. Can I ask more of a personal? So, if you're a, a citizen, this happened actually on the way home from Milwaukee last night. Um, coming on 172, this guy went by me at least at 100, 110. He was flying. Yeah. And weaving and all. If you've got a license number, can you report them? And I mean, it was ridiculous. I'm. We're lucky somebody didn't get hit. So, yep, you can report it. Um, what will happen with that will kind of vary based upon the availability of officers in that area. Um, obviously, a little bit of a lag time with 911. Uh, it could be speeding through, say, here, for example, and by the time it works its way through the 911 system, it's already up in Green Bay or Howard. Sure. But that's not uncommon. We get reckless driving complaints. The more information we have, the better, uh, at least so that a, an officer can find the vehicle. And um, depending on the severity of the driving conduct, the officer, deputy, or trooper, may initiate a traffic stop just based on what the complainant, the caller has said. Um, you know, for example, like drunk driving, reckless driving, things of that nature. Otherwise, they might just follow the vehicle for a little bit, develop a independent probable cause. Sure. So it's just kind of pointing the right direction, but then it's on the officer to make the yeah. independent. These guys are racing, there's no question. Like yeah, up. and with racers too, it could be a little tough. Um, most agencies in the county have gone to a, a rather restrictive pursuit policy, so if they're racing, they might give it a good effort, but um, by policy, we'd be uh, prohibited from chasing after a, a straight-up racing one. Sure. If it's something like wrong way on the freeway or something suspected drunk driving, 
Um, that gives us a little bit more leeway because the risks are higher with that. And we can pursue okay. a little bit further. Thanks, well, if we want to doubt it doesn't hurt the call, and if we got played, that, that certainly helps quite a bit. I just want to school. I believe school starting already. But school starting on the month. Are you guys going to be having the presence that you guys did around the schools the last year, around the beginning of the school year, with all the drop offs and the there was like police officers at all the different schools? And I feel like that helps a lot with flow as everyone's getting back into things. The school drop offs, pickups, all that. Yeah, I think we're going to continue to do that. That seems to be received pretty well. It's what the community wants. Um, it's been uh, productive in the past. We haven't gotten a, a lot of violations as far as the, uh, the quantity of them, but um, I think it's also had a calming effect, and I know the community feels safe. Uh, that's a pretty good uh, outcome. So I suspect we'll probably continue that and have our, our nation's officers getting out there and doing that. It gets a little tricky sometimes with uh, school um, dispersal, that's right at the time that we're changing shifts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's something I suspect we're going to keep pushing again for our guys to do. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions for Ryan? Ryan, anything else to add? Uh, nothing else to add today, no. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Brian from Public Works and Engineering, what do you have for us today? All right. Um, you guys may have seen my written report that was included in the packet. Um, I can go through each one of those items very quickly here. Um, the Broadway and Kansas pedestrian <laughs> ramp. Um, I'll cover that a little bit uh, later once I talk about the Alden Station Trail Project. Um, bike stencils on Cremier, uh, that pavement marking was freshened up already uh, last month, so that item will be removed from the agenda. More sab reconstruction, um, that's much like uh, Element Way, that's complete and will be removed from the agenda. Parking lot and sidewalk projects, uh, the sidewalk work out on Bart Star is completed. You may have seen uh, that's in, pedestrian ramps in, uh, all the restoration is complete. San Luis and Cormier pedestrian push buttons have been installed along with the um, additional sidewalk sections and the restoration. North parking lot of Village Hall, um, that's nearly complete, just waiting for the gates and the lights. Um, sports complex um, is pretty much complete with the exception of a little bit of restoration and then the fencing around um, the garbage receptacles. Uh, Lombardi and Access Road, um, I did recently for the tail end of last week, got the uh, proposal from AIRS uh, for their professional services. I'll be in the process of reviewing that this week. Um, Alden Station Trail, uh, that design is nearly 95% complete. Uh, we're currently, uh, we currently did discuss our final comments with McMahon on the 9th of this month, planned to host a public informational meeting. Uh, tomorrow night uh, to inform residents of the details of the project. Planning to send the project out to bid in early September uh, and award at the September board meeting um, with the construction to uh, start in October. Uh, we have been talking with the um, individuals working on the bridge project that should line up with their schedule well. Uh, there may be a couple weeks there where there may be limited activity, but um, it'll allow them just a little bit of a buffer just in case the project carries on a little longer than intended. Um, with that, I know Tracy had reached out to me uh, with a question about the ramps at Broadway and Hanson. Um, and the desire to um, kind of add a fork in the existing trail that you see there to potentially lead um, to a pedestrian ramp. I don't know who has control. Ryan, can, um, can you explain a little better? I think Sharon maybe is most familiar with where we're talking. Yeah. If you can explain that a little bit better or pop it up or something. But. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I just got yeah. Sharon, it's um, the trail that comes out of Alden Station and starts heading west. Mm -hmm. It goes back towards Broadway, so that's on the south side of Alden. Okay. There's a proposal for a ramp there, and then there already is a ramp slightly north of right. where that trail would come out. So Brian is going to address kind of both of those ramps and what the final product will look like. Okay. 
Where all the birds and so forth hang out. <laughs> could be. Well, you could walk here. Yeah. You would like to attack me. Yeah. No, I know where it is. I know where So currently there, there's what's uh, left of a gravel trail right here where the cursor is. Um, Joel's kind of drawing that with his mouse uh, pointer. Um, that, that trail essentially leads down and ties into the pedestrian bridge that's nearing completion. Um, from there, it does go to the north. Uh, at this intersection, there's currently an existing pedestrian ramp here that has truncated domes. Um, somewhat falls in the middle of the intersection, kind of is more towards the northern half. Um, kind of a unique placement for a pedestrian ramp. Um, but with that, uh, we are looking to add a, another ramp that would come straight out from the um, existing gravel trail there. Um, which will kind of allow people to get out, either get off from the, the bike ramp or the bike lane, uh, get up onto the trail, or vice versa, people will get down and in. Um, if, if, the, if, if there was the option, if a person was traveling by foot, um, say they're walking against the traffic, uh, they would be able to walk through the intersection and could jump onto that existing ramp. Uh, vice versa, someone coming out could go on the new ramp. Um, and get it into the western uh, way of travel on Hanson Road. Um, so with that, um, I don't know if you want me to cover anything additional, Tracy, or if anybody has any questions. The only thing else I talked to Brian about the trail comes out where, where Joel has a cursor, kind of the white arrow, um, but where that secondary access is, the one to the north, I had talked to Brian about seeing if we can swing the trail so it can get up and hit that as well. So almost having a Y. So there's one going to that one access point and then one continues on to the, the street. Because a bicyclist coming in um, or going out, let's say they're heading northbound on Broadway, they run into a 90 degree turn. So if we can put an access trail so that they can you know, get into that and then head northbound, it's much safer and much easier for bicyclists to see and to get into the travel lane. Um, and then, like Brian said, a pedestrian that's walking on the north side of Hanson coming across has an access point also to get onto the trail. And then a pedestrian heading westbound can walk on Hanson on the south side and have, again, a safe because crossing there. in the there. middle of the intersection. Yeah. So it just um, it makes it easier, I guess, for all users to get in and out of there and having the bike lanes on Hanson, or excuse me, on Broadway, there's a lot of bicyclists traveling along that quarter, um, which many of you probably know if you live down that way, you see a lot of bicyclists on there. So that's a three-way stop, right? It is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, and you know, with the new bridge, it's going to bring a lot more people, I think, in to the area to hop on that. <clears throat> that new trail and it'll be a lot busier than it was so to have a smooth access for people by foot and by bike and um, to having both of those access points will be a nice thing to have you know get in out of that development. Tracy one of the things Brian had mentioned to me on this topic and, and we haven't had a chance to talk about public safety this being a three-way stop um, key intersection one of the concerns that I have Encouraging inappropriate um, travel activity by bicyclists by putting them in the middle of the intersection. I guess my thought would be if you're traveling eastbound on Hanson and you want to cross Broadway, you should come to a stop condition, even if you're on a bike. And then if you are coming off the trail and you want to head westbound on Hanson, you should theoretically come to a stop, right? Right. As a motorist, what should be the expectation then? Should they Expect As, bicyclists at the middle of the intersection, or would we be better off bringing this up so that it's more in the north end here to match it with what the crosswalk would be? So, as a bicyclist, let's say you're coming eastbound on Hanson and you're going to go north on Broadway, you should be over that left turn lane. Okay. So, that's where you should go. Um, but if you're coming, let's say you're going to chop on the trail, then you could take it straight through and go straight across. But I agree with you. I mean, that's not ideally located in the middle. It probably would be better for it to be, and Brian, correct me, for the, right. to the north, because then the bicyclist coming out has a straight connection across to that bike lane, could turn right and head up Hanson. Okay. So 
I mean, that one's there. And as Brian and I were talking about, and I was looking at it, I'm like, well, I take it both, but ideally further north would be better. Sure. But then still connect it somehow with some kind of yes, trail to Connecting. soften the curve yes. for the cyclist. Yes. Yeah, like curving in so that they have a straight look, basically looking to the west to be able to. So I'm not that familiar with that trail. How far does that trail go up there? It goes up to the marine. Oh, it goes up to the marina. Okay. And then it goes across the Shawa Marina and eventually wrecks to through the Brown County Fairgrounds. And Brown County approves it. So the trail right now, this is a gravel state along all of this uh, circle, and then the bridge that we talked about before that Rex will talk about again uh, in his report extends across the confluence here. Kind of where the mouse is slowly moving back. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but the trail itself runs along the river's edge all the way up to the marina here. As my computer continues to catch up with itself. Okay. Um, but as Rex will talk about, that trail is planned to extend through Ashwaume and ideally will eventually connect to Brown County Fairgrounds through the new waters through the facility somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that, that, those are planned at this point. So there's, there's quite a bit of access there. I mean, ideally, it would be nice to move that one northbound, northbound ramp further north, but, you know, it's there, so I, I don't know. And I'll have to look, too. I don't know if the, the curb is integral curb there with, you know, Ford as part of the yeah. roadway. I don't, I, I can look into that okay. to see, you know, if it's, you know, it's a regular, well, sometimes we're doing a scab on curve, which is just essentially the pan and the head. You know, may, may not be as challenging to move it. Oh, and I don't know, Joel, if there's anything planned for that corner as far as the development, whether we could swing the trail. I, I spoke with Aaron, and he said it? that it's in the works. Okay. Um, he didn't have anything that he felt comfortable, you know, pushing out saying this is what it is. So, okay. there, yeah, we don't have any formal plans per se, but we have. Uh, an interest from the developer to submit a proposal for it. This is considered what's called lot one. So this large area is one singular lot. So we would either need to acquire an easement or maintain an easement, I should say, because the village technically owns the lot presently. Um, so we'd have to maintain some type of easement or do some kind of certified survey map process to exclude a portion to maintain that, that kind of Y section of trail. <clears throat> So since we own it, it's not prohibitive to be able to do that. No, no, no. So that's the group, I guess, on on that intersection. Um, if anyone has any other questions, or Brian, anything you want to add, or you want to look into it further, about, you know. I don't have anything additional unless the team has any questions. I think we can look at the, the curb and see how where that's at and then make a determination on that pet pad if it's desired to probably move the pet pad or that ramp, if you will, to the north part of the intersection just to like the intersection. You would probably prefer that. If we get to a point where if and when sidewalks were to ever be right. extended on Hanson, it would match up with all of that. Right. So instead of yeah, having that, that angle. Yeah. yeah. They could probably both well. Yeah. Um, Ryan Murphy, I don't know if you have any concerns with with this being a three-way intersection here. If we would have to work with maybe the county, because you have two, you have a left turn, a right turn, and I know that eastbound traffic on bicycle would want to go straight across the intersection. If that matters, or if we maintain the bike lane through this turning queue, if that gives them the legal right to across the road straight versus being kind of stuck in that, that right turn only lane. I, I guess I don't want yeah, to get kind of, hit that's kind of interesting and then be found liable for right. who's Yeah, it's kind of interesting from a traffic law point of view because, yeah, transitioning from being a, a vehicle on a roadway to being a bicycle on a bike path. Um, so yeah, if you're taking a left turn and then you end up exiting the roadway. If, uh, I mean, really, if you had the I guess the way I would look at it is if you had the entrance to the bike path in the northeast quadrant of the intersection, left turn would be the most appropriate. Yeah, they're making a left turn, but then they're immediately turning right off the roadway. So that may be best in that sense because it's a straight shot. 
I would say it gets a little murkier. If it's on the northern end of the intersection, yeah, it's a left turn. We know they're going to make a left turn and say, "Oh, they're going to drive there." Let's see what you so I don't know if that makes sense for most, but if you're a bicyclist and you're looking to get on the trail, and we had that ramp on the northeast quadrant here with the trail looping on, if you're a bicyclist, the preferred route would be to turn left on the Broadway from eastbound Hanson. So you're swinging around, my curse is real small, and then getting onto where that kind of proverbial ramp. You're going to, most of the bicyclists coming okay. up there, you two are bicyclists also, you're probably going to go straight across to that south access, I would imagine, if you're trying to get on that trail. <clears throat> and, you know, there could be something in that intersection, marking in that intersection, letting bicyclists know whether it's just a hash line, you know, going through there. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure what's the appropriate traffic, you know, if someone that's no spike pet stop that's that was my concern to there. Brian is if, if you're a bicyclist intending to go straight across to get to the trail but right. you're in the right turn only lane and you have a car stopped on North Broadway looking to turn left onto West Hanson and the cyclist kind of rolls through their stop. They shouldn't roll through their stop anyway. <laughs> they should yes. not roll through their stop. <laughs> but because that motorist maybe is anticipating that bicyclist to be turning right, right. Yeah. instead of going straight across, who would be at fault then? Yeah. Just trying to avoid yeah. those conflicts. Yeah, I think if you check with an engineer specializing that, they would know how you could mark that and make it so it's clear to everyone that you know bicyclists could go straight if they wanted to, or however you would denote that. I'm sure there's a way to do that as well. So, depending on what goes on that parcel, there is it something that we're anticipating would increase pedestrian traffic or bike traffic in that area? And I think the original concepts in Alden Station had a, I wouldn't say a high density, but a higher density residential type development. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's just say something beyond yeah. just a two, you know, two family type home mm -hmm. or something like that. Comparable to the town homes or the kind of that's already there. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks, Brian. I think the other thing too is what kind of, uh, what kind of bicycle traffic are you having coming down Hanson Road or going down Hanson Road? You know, I mean, if, if, let's say like Kyle or myself or Tracy, you know, would be, you know, experience. Well, not only experience, but we would be going, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta cross Ashland, you know, I mean, that's, yeah. see, that's the other thing, you know, uh, I'm thinking that we would be more adept to, to knowing what to look for rather than say, I'm thinking that you know somebody that wouldn't be as an experienced bicyclist would be probably the ones that would be going down into that trail and down in towards all the station down in that area. That's just my opinion. Well, and it's you have good options there. So some people are going to be out and they're going to want to go on the trail and they're going to go on the trail. Some people are going to stay on Broadway. Broadway is a great road to bicycle on. Yeah. Got bike lanes and you have a lot of people that will just stay out there. So it just depends on what you're doing and where you're going. Yeah. So a lot of people will maybe come and just head north. On Broadway, and, we'll even hop on the trail. and I know myself when I come down Hanson Road because that's the way I go into the pier. I, I come yeah. down straight down Hanson, and when I get to that intersection on there, I mean, I am myself am very aware of the traffic. You know, is that car going to stop over there coming from the right or coming from the left? You know, that's the other thing too. You know, I mean, it's you got to look at it at the, the bicycle right. way and and also the you know the person that's riding the bike. I would be. You know. Yeah, you're gonna have all kinds of like types of bicyclists there because you're gonna right. have the ones that are more recreational want to be on the trail. You're right. gonna have the ones that are more transportation are gonna to want to be on the road. So you're gonna have a real combination there that you're gonna to have to accommodate. So yeah, you know, keeping that in mind when whatever we do there would be a good thing. Yeah. So. But right. I guess what it comes down <laughs> to, everybody's supposed to stop there. Exactly. <laughs> and there are rules that when you stop at the same time, who goes first? Yes. Now that doesn't always apply to or the. It doesn't always happen with bicycles. It doesn't always happen with vehicles, motor vehicles either. But this, you know, this this is an intersection where everybody has a stop sign. Yeah. If you're like me, you walk the bike. I go, you go first. Mm -hmm. yeah, they got metal. I just got yeah. a bicycle. <laughs> There's only one there. Right? Yeah. Um, but um, you mentioned about moving, possibly moving that path. Do we need to have that in the plan so that the board's aware that if 
something happens with that property. I know you're here, right, and aware, but does it need to be part of for future or I not? Think maybe, maybe if Brian and Joel, you guys can look into it further, get some, and then come back to a meeting and. But if if, if they're already considering doing right. it, they're doing it whether it's in a plan or not, right? It doesn't have to be in a plan for them to do it. Right. Right. So it, it sounds like you're, they're already considering it. Well, I think if the concept first came to us to our attention today. Oh, okay. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So the, the second ramp, the southern ramp, is going in. Yeah. Um, That's the new one, right? Right, the yeah. new one, the additional one. The northern one, um, it does have truncated domes in it. We're going to get those removed because technically it's not a true safe crossing because if someone that's uh, has limited eyesight, you're going to send them out into an intersection that they're going to have nowhere to go, no, no refuge area. Um, so we were going to get that switch out to just a regular bike type ramp that doesn't have any domes in it. Um, so we could potentially slide that to the north. Um, I, I can dig into that. that I, don't, I don't think it would be too much of an issue because we already have it. We were working through the permits with the county. Um, the trail portion, um, adding the fork in the trail, that's not in the plan. Um, not saying it's something that we couldn't look to add. Um, I, I know we kind of just used the plan. I think there was a plan that was established either back in 2019 or 2020 and essentially used that as kind of our boilerplate or, or baseline and just uh, made modifications to kind of fit, fit the field conditions that are out there now. Uh, now the construction of the homes has occurred, construction of the bridge occurred, um, just looking to kind of, you know, get it cleaned up and get it paid. So. Okay. Anything else for Public Works? Let's go on to Parks and Recreation. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Um, Rex, anything that you may appreciate? Uh, just two things, uh, the bike uh, the bike bollards for the front of the village all came in finally. Yes, thank you. They looked finally. <laughs> and, uh, and so we got those in about two weeks ago. And uh, just a quick update on the Ashwaukee River Trail landing on the Ashwaukee Park side. Um, it's been paved. There is still a, a bunch of landscaping work that needs to be done. A couple of little fixes that need to be done. Um, but uh, we're actually doing a, a, a punchless walkthrough on that section. <clears throat> on Wednesday, uh, the railings on the bridge finally are starting to be manufactured. Mm -hmm. uh, about two months late on that, uh, but those are finally being installed. That's what's holding up, has been holding up the building of the landing at the Alden Station mm -hmm. site because they don't want to do the landing until the barge and the crane, which needs to be in place for the railing placement. Is, is out of there. So once all the railings are done, then the barge and the crane can get out of there, and then Michael's staff, really a strength up, will be able to do work on that landing to get it ready for, for paving when, when, uh, when PW gets sent it out. So that's where we are with that. Good. Anybody questions for Rex? Mm -hmm. Good. Thanks, Thank Rex. You. And then Lolo, it looks like Natalie is online. Natalie, anything to share with us today? Hello, um, hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, wonderful. Well, sorry I can't be there in person. We had a surprise visit um, from uh, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Their Region 5 director is in Green Bay. So I was able to host them here, but our meeting went just a little bit tight, so I couldn't get there in person. So I'm glad that we have this virtual option. So thank you. Um, Thank you to the village for um, helping support the Wello Wellbeing Survey. We see that on the front on the front page of the village website. Really appreciate that support. Um, that is going to be that survey is live and open to anyone um, over the ages of 18 uh, to um, take until August 31st. So we still have about three weeks, uh, but we're getting a really great um, sample. Um, so we're we're being able to see kind of those numbers uh, tick on through. And so thank you to everyone who has shared that and helped support that. And if anyone in the room has not yet taken that, uh, this is your opportunity to take that anonymous about five minute survey and it will really help us in terms of looking at some of those different things that we can do collectively in the community to improve well-being. Uh, in terms of Frogger, so we held our first Frogger event in June. So thank you to Ishwabadan for helping support that. Um, in the uh, There's two locations in Ishwabadan, uh, Pilgrim Way between South Oneida Street and Holmgren Way. 
So we had folks out there from 3 to 5 p.m. There were two warnings and 25 folks who yielded correctly there. Um, and then there was another Frogger location held at Holmgren Way and Marvel Lane uh, from 5 to 7 p.m. There were four warnings and 25 folks who yielded correctly there. Uh, our next Frogger event is on August 31st. And this year there are 10 municipalities participating in 12 locations around Brown County. So that's that same day, um, those three different events. Uh, collectively for that first event, we saw 70 warnings across Brown County and 712 people yielding correctly. So we've been kind of tracking what that ratio looks like over time and it's getting better. So that's really great to see. And so thank you for Ashwabanan for really being a great partner in that, in that process with us. Um, and then as part of that Yield to Your Neighbor campaign, we did uh, hold a bike rodeo as well um, at one of the parks in the city of Green Bay. And we're able to um, actually invite, there's over 200 kids that showed up. Uh, Bay Care Clinic offered some free bike helmets. So they got fitted for bike helmets. Um, the Green Bay Bicycle Collective came and, and provided some great uh, kind of rules of the road training. Um, we Bike ETC was also there to help with some of that Center for Childhood Safety. We had police, we had fire, and we also had the school district. Um, their food service came out and was able to, through their summer feeding program actually distribute over 85 meals to kids as well, free in the park. So uh, that's kind of what's what's happening on a wellow front, and we're looking forward to that next Frogger on August 31st. Thank you, Natalie. Anybody have any questions for Natalie? Yeah, what's Bonnie. Frogger? Question, what is Frogger, one of the audience? Great, great. So if you remember the video game Frogger, where there's that little frog that tried to cross the road without getting smushed, um, that's that's really where the name Frogger came from. But the idea is it's a, it's a traffic um, pedestrian uh, crosswalk kind of, uh, can I say program, uh, where you, Enforcement, thank you, Tracy. So we have um, officers who are there. Uh, we mark before kind of that intersection, before that area, and we have someone who's in a, a vest. We take safety very seriously on these on these crosswalk enforcement pieces, um, and they walk across in a designated crosswalk. Um, our state is a yield state, so when someone is in a crosswalk, um, it is the law to yield to that pedestrian in that crosswalk. Um, and so it's really working to kind of raise awareness uh, about yielding to your neighbor in a crosswalk. Um, Frogger maybe is the not appropriate way of saying it because we do not want anyone to get hit or harmed during these things. And and those people who are walking across, if there is any, you know, if there's any safety concerns, they do not um, go across. But the idea isn't that officers necessarily are ticketing people, but really it's an, it's an effort collectively as a community to make sure that it's safer for all users of our road and to really um, educate folks on, you know, we are a yield state and, you know, yielding to folks in a pedestrian uh, crosswalk, a marked pedestrian crosswalk. Natty, latest, you know, um, so you guys have done just, just a great job of education, right? So you have access to the schools. Is it possible, and I don't even know if this would help, if you would have, it's probably going to have to be written, but something for the children to take home because you truly have concerned citizens there, without a doubt, as yeah. parents. So, and and our goal always has been with you is how do we get this? How do we educate people? How do we get it out in the world to let people know what their responsibility is for somebody at a crosswalk? Because I bet there's a lot of people that don't. I mean, I'm sure I've learned from these meetings more than I knew previously. So I don't know if that's a plus, if that even would make any difference, because um, not everybody gets the press Gazette like you guys. I read your articles all the time. Very valuable. But um, that education is it's huge. Yeah. Yeah, it's huge. And it's it's continuous. Right. It's like you, you have to, you know, every year it's like going back because you're hitting different folks. And, you know, especially within the school system, there's you know, some parents are our new parents to the school system. And, and yes, yeah, so I, I would agree with you. Um, we are working with our school districts to get that out. Um, a piece of good news. Um, so Wello collaborates with the Brown County um, every three years. They do what's called a community health needs assessment. And then they create a community health improvement plan. And this um, 
this current cycle, one of the things that they identified as a need in our community was around pedestrian um, safety and kind of active communities type work. And so Wello leads that strategy. There were some ARPA funds that came down, um, obviously through the federal government, um, that the health department, the Brown County Health Department has been able to say, hey, strategy leads for these community health improvement plan, we have some dollars, what would you like to do with that? And so uh, we actually just um, got noticed that um, we had put forth some additional dollars to help support the Yield to Your Neighbor campaign throughout the county. Um, and so that was approved. So we will have some additional dollars um, moving forward yet this year and next year to even try some, try to get that word out even to even more locations, right? The Press Gazette is great because it's a, a free platform for us to use, but we know that it's gonna take a lot more and it's gonna have to be a lot more intentional to really try to get much more, um, much more touches and eyes on, on kind of that message. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Otherwise, thank you, Natalie. All right, on to item 8A is a discussion with Dean Hain, who's sitting right here front. He is the Port and Solid Waste Director for Brown County um, regarding the deposits of glass and debris on county highways and local roads in the village of Ashwaubenon from Brown County Resource Recovery Center. And I reached out to Dean, um, and this Sharon had asked for this to be on our agenda last month. Sharon and Campbell both live in that area. They live off the, on the east side. Yeah, we said it Broadway. Um, so she had requested it again. Um, this has been something forever. I mean, I've talked to Dean about this for probably 10 years. Um, so it's, it's nothing new, nothing new probably to Dean. But Sharon, I don't know if you want to make this comment first since you're the one that asked to be on the agenda, and then maybe we'll have Dean just address it and kind of where they're at. And... No. I just notice that <laughs> walking is a lot of glass. And if you have a dog, you worry about getting in. Not that I have dog, but other people I see go around. However, lately it has been getting cleaned up. Glass on the roads? On uh -huh. the sidewalk? On the sidewalk there. Well, I mean, we're not sweeping the sidewalk, and there shouldn't be any glass getting on the sidewalk. No trucks drive on it. Okay, I don't know. So that would be yeah. people breaking glass. Like, or yeah, glass, you know. I know. Yeah. They can't control everybody that comes in, but I just, it was just a concern. So the main, uh, the thing that's come up for years in my, well, I've talked to Dean about several times since come up in the, this committee a couple times is the amount of glass that gets left in the bike lane specifically on Broadway. Um, a lot of it coming from the Recovery Resource Center, um, mainly between Hanson Road and Pilgrim Way. And um, a few years ago, before the South Landfill opened, Dean had a full-size sweeper that was available and he went out at least three times a week and cleaned that whole dang section. It was great for about a year. Um, then your super had to go to the other landfill. And um, it's just a constant problem, just the sheer volume of vehicles that are coming in. So um, just to try to get a solution that continues and is there, because when you think about it, that is the only north-south bike lane in the village of Ashwaubenon. It's really the only north-south bike lane probably on, on the west side of the river for sure. I don't know where the next one is out when you head west. Um, so it is a heavily traveled um, area. Um, and the next closest road is Ashland for a north-south corridor, which a lot of bicyclists probably not feel comfortable out there. Um, so I asked Dean to come. Um, he is in charge of the port and also the recycling center that's down there to address the concerns of the committee. Is there a reason that you would have excess of glass right there when is it when that truck empties or is that glass falling out of there all the time? Well, so I'll just be fast. Yeah. Now. yeah. So you know, it's the resource recovery facility, so that's where all the Brown County communities recyclables go. And then we transload it and move it to our recycling facility in Allegheny County. Um, the truck routes are noted in blue on that diagram. So all of our Truck traffic, whether it's route trucks coming from the village of Robin or Green Bay or De Pere, they use Hanson to get the Broadway or Pilgrim Way to get the Broadway and then come to where we're located at, which is a little blue note at Cold and uh, Broadway. So that's that's our truck route. Um, now, you know, 
And as Tracy mentioned, we had a full size sweeper that we had acquired for the self landfill, and we were able to utilize that until that opened up. Uh, we then, uh, you know, we recognize we have a community responsibility. I mean, we don't, we're not obligated to do what we're doing, but we are community minded, and we bought ourselves, um, you know, a full size sweeper. Joel, Delia, or Brian, you know, they're 160, 180 thousand dollars. Well, to have one that just drives to just use it that little bit doesn't make sense. So what we purchased was a fifty thousand dollar um like when you straddle you know you actually get on it um so we did purchase that to keep our immediate property picked up and we do that monday wednesday friday so when you say immediate property what are you talking about what areas they will you know i talked to the guys and some feel comfortable going a little farther than others but basically the majority of the guys that do that monday wednesday friday will go um just pat just north to the by docks and, and circle there not going all the way to pilgrim but just go uh, underneath 172 turn and then head south and then go down by Redu construction or whatever there, Redu construction or Redu, um, and turn there. So we're doing that immediate area and do both. Um, both sides of the road, both sides of Broadway? Both sides, yes, the east and west um, side of Broadway and we'll do the north south side of Globe as well as the sidewalk in our parking lot and that gets done three times a week. And I don't really want that individual going farther than that. Yes, they have yellow on, you know, there is a light on it, but it is, a, it's just like a bike, right? I mean, sure. It's small. It's small, and um, I do not want them traversing all the way down to Hanson to do that. But now, Broadway is a county trunk, so, you know, we are in communication with the highway department, and they do sweep there. They have a lot of roads to do. It's hard to understand what their frequency is, but they're around, you know, I don't know if it's monthly or whatever it is to do. The stretch of Broadway, and then we communicate with Ashwaubenon on two. If we see that it's on Hanson or Pilgrim, um, you know, we'll communicate to the village that there's glass outside of our range, and Ashwaubenon does a good job getting out there. Now, if there's glass outside of that range, that mm -hmm. you know, so so I, you know, one thing I recommend to when you receive um, glass issues is one to contact us directly and immediately. You know, um, there's been a lot of discussion about glass lately, and we're out there looking at what it might have got to you and took a week for you to get to, you know, to Morgan or to Randy so Schultz, and then it gets to us, and we're like, what are they? Who's seeing? There's nothing out here. So just come to us directly, you know, um, contact us directly and identify where, you know, so we can, we know who to, what resources to, to deploy. You know, to call the highway department or call the village or send our, you know, small sweeper to that location where we need to know when and where. When you say directly, is there like a, a particular phone number? Yes, 492. That's... So it can be 492, 4950 is our, you'll get a person. Yeah. Um, or even DC underscore. What is it? Research. That's all right. Um, but so our website. On the website. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We'll get it. Yep, so either way. What was the number? You say that number again. 920-492-4950-4950. So I appreciate that. I'm Kim Shamrock, and I appreciate that information and that you came to the meeting. And I bike um, I bike that frequently. My husband and I do. Other people in the neighborhood do. I think I want to say this as nicely as possible. I think people would be very surprised to hear that any part of it swept Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It does not, I was surprised to hear it was swept even as frequently as once a week because you can see the same pieces of glass in place. And then it's a little concerning because a particularly a lot of debris comes down from where you said your southern end is all the way down to where we get on in front of Alden Station that's where you turn on the Broadway. So it's a, it's a shorter stretch, but it's not really under your umbrella so then that triggers the county or your city could you say you're going to the redo property right like the redo office building yes okay so we're south of that yet and there's quite a bit of it because if you're turning out of where you are and you see it you're south of Redu's building is all i'm not sure how to resolve that I well, and that's i think part of the problem or has been a problem over the years is it is the trucks going to your facility? I would say, you know, a majority of that. And, you know, your comment is you need to know where and when and how and all that stuff. 
But my question, my thing is, it's everywhere. You know, it, to pinpoint it, it's hard because it, it's the whole dang stretch on both sides. Like, it, it just is everywhere. And it needs to be attended to more than a tradition, a normal road because of the amount of stuff that's coming through there. And we have three jurisdictions. We have Brown County, we have Port, and then we have the village. And Joel, if I'm right, the village is really responsible for Pilgrim Way, is that correct? Just the section east-west? Yeah, is village well, road? it's my understanding. It's my understanding that um, it's like Pilgrim Way from Ashland to Broadway is considered a local street, but it is a truck route. So that's the truck routes that Dean had shown. Yeah. That is a, certainly an allowable um, transportation use, just given the fact that it's in our industrial park and it's built to that standard. Hanson Road to Broadway is considered HH, um, and then Broadway is obviously County Trunk Highway H. So the village's only technical jur local jurisdiction is, is the section of Pilgrim. But it picks up County YY once you get west of Ashland Avenue. Um, so we've worked with Dean, and we've we've tried to work with Brown County Highway too, and, and Dean knows this, trying to encourage a greater degree of sweeping, at least on the county trunk highways. And then even during the time when you guys were out of sweeper, the sweeper that you did have was out of commission or had to be moved to a different location. Um, our crews would come in and, and do the sweeping at, at the request. Um, so when a request came in, our crews would go out and do the sweeping, um, just again to make sure that we're Trying to do our best to keep that area clean. Um, one of the questions that I would have for, for Dean is those individuals that are hauling material to your location, are those municipal municipal partners or who's what what companies are bringing glass and things like that? Because that, that's where it would come from, right? Is debris coming off of trucks and whose trucks are those? And is there anything we can do with the haulers then to hold them accountable for the debris that's coming off the vehicles? Um <clears throat> I don't know that I can. I, maybe the village can do something. I mean, right. the county. I'm not, no, I know you can't. But is there, who, who are the haulers? I guess all the municipalities. Um, there's only a number of them that haul them for themselves. There's Wabana, Depeer, Green Bay, um, <clears throat> Alloway, um, Howard. No, Howard has a contracted. So some of them have contracted haulers. Um, that may be Harders or GFL. Uh, waste management comes in. You know, we can get you a list, but there's, there's, you know, there's about 50 inbound trucks a day, and then the county contracts with GFL to, to haul it out, and that's about seven vehicles a day. Sure. So is it all the material coming in commingled recyclables, or is it only glass, or what do you have? It's commingled. Commingled. And is there any long-term plan for that to get expedited out to the, the southern county facility where? where the landfill will eventually be located for the next few years? No, the, the Tri-County Recycling Facility is in Allegheny County. Right. You know, that's where the facility is. That's where all the recycles are done. will always stay there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what we can do is just throw your gar throw your glass in the garbage. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, yeah. Truthfully, yeah. It's, it's a, it, it causes us concrete problems. It causes us compact issues. It causes truck issues. If I'm going to fix it up for about 10 bucks, 10 bucks a ton, we transload it to the recycling facility for $10 a ton, put it to our processing facility at $70 a ton. We got $90 a ton in glass and we get paid five. What the garbage? Beer bottles? I, you know, personally, I don't even recycle glass because it's, it's silica sand. It's, it's, but it technically is a state law, so you have to offer the recycling of it, um, but it is a pain. It wrecks our equipment. What are your, do you ever have an op? Opportunity to talk to your counterparts in, in their areas. Do they see the same thing? It, it's, it's it's just a part of doing business. But yeah, glass. That, that glass you know gets handled and rehandled again, and it gets broken smaller and smaller, and everything has rubber seals for locking floors, and it just works its way you know through. So when we have a like our contractor for GFL, he gets two new trailers. They get two new trailers every year. We always put those new trailers on recycling because everything's tight and everything's good and it has that walking floor sure. um, so then we're good but but in a year's time of that walking floor that keeps moving that glass gets in there and just causes gaps and and those trucks lose glass when they're turning or bolting you know like the Hanson uh, railroad grade is 
you know, you get that yeah. and it just shakes class out of the vehicle. Yeah. You know, we do have them and we started this about two years ago where um, any truck, when they go to leave, they have to clean off their, you know, sometimes they'll end up on the, on the frame of the bumper or on, you know, yep. we make them sweep it. We, you know, Gravel trucks. Yep. Yep. So we make them clean their vehicles in the lot. Um, you know, I feel like we're doing really everything we possibly can uh, to, to minimize it and it's it just, in, it's inherent in, yeah. Uh, my wife and I rolled that yesterday. Can we just open the floor real quick and tell me the motion to open the floor? So moved. Second, tell me. Oh, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, go ahead. And stage name and address, please. Uh, Bob Arnold, 1421 Finch Lane. Uh, my wife and I rode, we took Hanson Road down the Broadway and we did the green lane with the turn back. And I was very impressed, uh, Broadway, how clean it was. Yes, there's a couple pieces of glass right by your driveways, uh, but it's the cleanest I've seen it in a couple of years. Hanson Road was, um, had more trouble. There was a roofing nail somewhere uh, north of 172, but that's not true, I don't think. And I was thinking as we rode along, I wish Green Bay could learn from them because once we got to, to uh, Georgia Pacific and into Green Bay, all the way to Mason Street, it was, it was pretty bad with debris and gravel and stuff on the road. But Ashwaubenon itself on Broadway yesterday was really good shape. So I have three days a week on a Friday. Keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, we, forget. we make sure at the end of the day, Friday, people are going to be out recreating on the weekend. So we, we hit it last thing of the day. Yeah. There's a gravel uh, pit on double E west of the pier. And I see, when I go down that route, a lot of times they have a sweep route there, sweeping uh, by the gravel pit because of trucks entering and leaving there. And that's so great because that's always clean. And so doing it on a periodic basis like that, I think it's very good for bikers. So thank you. Anybody else in the audience while it's open want to say anything? Nope. Then we need a motion from us, I think, to close the floor. A motion to close. Second. Second motion. So can all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Okay. Can I ask, so do we sweep it at all at any time? Because they sweep all the rest of the roads. Just do we, I mean, and that's actually they come, they come down our road more, more often than I would think they would have. They, they do a good job. So I don't know if they actually work that street. We don't, we don't have yeah. county roads. Um, oh, that's, that's okay. That's county county roads, so, yeah. um, we, we will sweep our local roads. I mean, at, at a minimum, we're five times a year, um, but we're not going to greater than that. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Um, good. And, and again, we're willing partners to work with uh, Brown County Parks. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And okay. even Brown County Highway, if they're having issues, they can sweep over here. They, have, they do have a lot of county trunk highways that they do need to sweep, a lot of urban highways that require the sweeping to be done. Um, we're willing to work with them. It's just a matter of who bears the responsibility. Yeah, 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 I read the time. Yep. Yeah. I think that's the key. I, mean, I know there's all the problems with the trucks and they, you know, the gas gets worn out and all that glass gets everywhere. I get that. Um, and then you have the cars driving by and they blow all that glass potentially into the bike lanes. Um, so they do, they do get full. So it's like Bob was just saying, you have the EE, the gravel pit. They're out there frequently and I'm glad that you guys are out there Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But it's just, I think it needs to be kept on. The county has to work with county highways, with you guys, with the village, and really make sure that stays clear because it, it really, a lot of times, it's not. And you go through there. I mean, it's not uncommon for me on a weekend to get texts from people or calls from people saying, Trace, I blew, we, our group went through here, we blew two tires on the way to it. Or Bonnie will reach out and say, Trace, I blew a tire again. So it is not, it's not like it doesn't happen. It does. And there is glass along there. And it's just, we know it's going to be there. So let's get a way that we can stay on top of it so as much as we can so it isn't there because it is a frequent place that people are biking and it's a good place to bike it's a safe and it's clear and it's a great shot it's a nice loop all the way around the river and there's a lot of people that do it so that's you know to look at a way that we can guarantee as much as we can that it's going to be clean 
and that I guess that's my frustration with it. It just gets so far, and then all of a sudden we go backwards again, and then it gets so far again, and it's like no one's taking the lead or the responsibility on it to a certain degree. There's too many jurisdictions involved with it. The real question would be is how do you put enough pressure on it to get the people that design the garbage packers to redesign? Because what we're doing is we're we're just masking the issue with a band-aid and the issue is over here. So how do you get enough people together to get to that? Because even the people that buy the garbage packer, they got to buy the garbage packer, right? So it's the, guy, it's the company that designed the garbage packer. There's so many to get to those people if you have enough people to complain right. and say, you know. I mean, Joel, for like, we have industrial project or a project going on in our community and they're dragging dirt and stuff up to the road. Now we can go to them as a village and say, you need to clean that up and make you know, require them to clean that up. Would it be similar for this? If these trucks are coming out of this facility, dragging, you know, there's hazardous materials being dumped on the road. Mm -hmm. Is that something that the village can say, cite the, their facility, or is it just the haulers? How do you how, how do you identify the hauler who drops a coke bottle or beer bottle on the road? You don't. Dean, would you say in your just in your knowledge, would you say more of that glass comes from is it Gene Fredrickson? Is that GF? Who's ever hauling it to the landfill? Would you say it's coming from there or actually from the garbage packers that are coming in with that many trucks coming in? Today? Or both? It's Hard to the same amount of materials coming in is what's leaving, right? We're just, it's just a little I just didn't know if there's a, because there's a difference in how those trucks are built. There's a packer versus a big long trailer that has an unloader. You know, yeah, it's a balance. Um, I was just curious. We have seven vehicles leaving of ours, or right. 50 coming in that we put into that 50 or into that seven. So, yeah, so it's probably, it's, 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 some it's of mostly the, the route trucks. Yeah. In the, in the, you know, I mean, Look at some of them, and they're not in the best shape. You know, they're you know, the municipal ones are fairly decent, but even then they get old. And you know, a lot of the private ones, you know, some of these companies are barely afloat, and they're got rusty garbage trucks. They're not in the best shape. Yes. To, to answer Tracy's question, there, there could be a variety of avenues. One would be the specific traffic code as it relates to the water. So like basically, they're dropping debris on a, on a highway, and they decided certainly. How do you catch them? I don't know. Yeah, that, right. That's the challenge. I don't know if this facility is permitted through the through the DNR. If there's components to that natural resource admin code that says it has to be clean, there, there could be that. But as as it relates to Tracy's comment, if it were like a stormwater management type thing, like an erosion sediment control type situation, then we do have some enforcement capability. But I don't know that it would necessarily qualify in this case. It would be more Going after haulers, leaving debris on, on roadways and highways, and administering the code that way, uh, but maybe through a permitted process through the DNR as a police. But so to your so point, how do you catch them? Yeah. I don't debris know. Going off it, of it may be more cost effective and beneficial to sweep the road. Yeah. Yeah. To be because yeah. 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 at the end yeah. of the day, yeah. you get the road swept. Right. And you know, that gravel will pull off the truck and break the windshield, and it's like, well, the gravel hit the road first and bounced up. So my insurance covered it. Right now. So I mean, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's, yeah. it's a you tough know, one. I know I'm newer on this, but I, I don't want his facility to have to take calls from you know like that's not fair for your people to have to take disgruntled people yeah. with calls all the time. And it sounds like he has a plan and he's working his plan. And I just would love to see us come to whatever the part that's not getting swept to figure out how we address that. But you're an underlying tone of that's very difficult for Brown County to commit to. Part of the thing that I keep thinking, because I, I, we're being diligent about it, mm -hmm. and when I hear glass, I'm like, I'll bet any money that's not in our area. <laughs> you know, because it's like, how can how can it be? It just if we're doing it that frequent. Where is this happening? You know, so I'm, I mean, I have a lot of doubts when you get complaints of where where is it actually occurring. That's why I would actually encourage the call. I, I want to hear where it is because you know people just say you know yeah like you know glass on broadway well broadway is you know <laughs> to pier to green bay where on broadway 
in my experience, it is south of where you said you're sweeping, and they're probably coming off of you. Yeah. Yeah. So are you so you're in that from others that live by you as well? I mean, other. Mm -hmm. oh, so yes. so I'm I'm with you. I wouldn't share this number. Tons of people. If they had a complaint, I would make the call to let you know I'm, yeah, I'm, he, I'm getting complaints. Well, what Dean's saying, though, he needs to know. Right. Yeah. Then, so not, not, like not a week hear. later. Right. Yeah. And I have no, that's, no problem taking the right. calls. Or, or there's the, on the village's website, you can notify through the village. Go to the website and put it out there, too. And then that can be passed on to, to Dean or whoever, or Brian sees it, and then he takes it from there. So there are ways to do it. I mean, he needs to know. People need to step up and do it. I mean, what happens is you get home. You're mad about it at the time because you had to go out in the travel lane or whatever. Get home, you forget about it, and you forget to let anybody know. And if we can encourage people to do that, even though I don't want to say Dean should have a thousand phone calls, but then he hears about it, or they notify the village, and we're aware of it, and hopefully it can get better. But I still think we need to have a commitment of some kind that, okay, you're out there three days a week doing this section, this section, this section. Maybe the village commits to, we're going to make sure we're doing our section once a week or twice a week or whatever. And the county highway department's gonna commit to say, okay, we're gonna make sure we get these sections that no one else is getting. Because well, it sounds like their section's the one that's the worst section. That's right. probably part of the problem. So so it, it, I guess one of the things based on what you're saying and what he's saying is we really haven't identified the problem when we say there's glass on Broadway, you know, that's a big section. If we know where the glass is, that's what he's asking. Tell me where it is. So I think we have to find a way to identify where the problem is. What we could do is if Dean and I, you know, I can set up a time and we can see them fall over at Concord Highway. We know it's kind of the general geographic area of all we're concerned, and that's Pilgrim, Broadway, and Hanson. Mm -hmm. We can sit down and chat internally and figure out if there's an opportunity for us to increase sweeping, mm -hmm. knowing that Dean and his crew only have capability of basically getting to the viaduct, mm -hmm. going down below, and then Heading maybe a few hundred feet south on Broadway to that new construction office. Um, and then it really gets picked up by the county highway. And I'm not going to necessarily commit our crews to doing county trunk highways, but if we are going to locally commit to cleaning our local streets more frequently, then it makes sense to just do a loop. But then you know, we would want some reimbursement or some kind of compensation from the county to cover that. And I know that's probably not going to be mean, but. At the end of the day, it, it's to some degree um, par for the course. This is a kind of a transfer facility for recyclables. So right. anticipate the breed to, to be in the area. And that, that's just that's the nature of the beast. If this was located outside of village limits, you'd see this same issue wherever else it would be located. It's just to some degree unfortunate that we're in to some some respect kind of an urban environment, you have curb and gutter, you have a very popular bike route on Broadway. So the issues with the glass tends to be expand, expansive. If it were on the county trunk highway with rural section, ground shoulders, probably wouldn't be as much. So maybe what we need to do, you know, everybody here is elected or appointed members of the committee and the, the public. You know, we need to make an effort to do as Dean said. When you see it, we have to identify where the problem is. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be the first step. And that me, maybe you have to talk to your guys and say, where are you seeing the glass? And they're say, you know, I drive this every this, this section, and I never hardly ever see glass here, but I see it on the south end. So maybe that will just give us a clue as to where the problem is. And, and as many people as we talk to, instead of saying that, just uh, that I had changed my tire again, and yeah. so you know, I guess we just need to try to find out where this glass is. And you can't blame the truck driver. Well, you, know, I mean, I mean, you can to a certain degree if they're not well, cleaning off the back of their truck right. after depositing material, and well, if they're not getting their truck prepped to, to exit the facility. I'm I'm thinking though that the stuff that's going to fall off is falling off. Before they ever get into the facility, I would think so. Yeah, there's probably some. I would guess there's some leakage as they're entering the facility. Yeah, I mean, and then they go after International Harvester or somebody and say, "Hey, you better 
you better repair your trucks, make them more, uh, you know, so they so nothing get cracks. I mean, they, that's impossible. Being an ex trucker, I know all that. <laughs> yeah, you would have to go to keep it. No, it is. That, it's, that manufactured the garbage packer itself. Right, not the chassis. And the village of Ashwaubenon well, doesn't get it. That's a that's like a, a pimple on a on the world. You know what I mean? Well, and that's the thing that's hard is there's so many different trucks and companies bringing there's glass into that facility. So that's the hardest part is for us to try to control that. I think the easiest part is to see if we can get it swept more often and how we can do that. Because we know it's a problem. We know it's going to continue to be a problem until someday that maybe they figure out something with trucks that <coughs> is not coming out of well, there. And that may be who knows how long. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we know it needs to take care of and let's figure out a way we can sweep it more often so it's safe for all, all motors, all um, vehicle users out there. I mean, Dean's comment about his guys out on their small sweeper, you know, he doesn't like them to go out there. He's afraid it's a truck route. You know, mm -hmm. he doesn't want them too far from his place, which I, I understand. Mm -hmm. But then you'll get a bicyclist. There's bicyclists out there. And when that thing is full of glass, that bicyclist is, has to move out into the travel lane. Mm -hmm. And that makes it more unsafe for them as well. You have that travel lane specific for bicyclists. Let's keep it open so they can safely travel to it so they don't have to go around. Um, and have a chance to get picked off. So, so we have, we have some Brian, Brian. So <laughs> who do we get our bar garbage packers from? Uh, they're from Oshkosh Truck. Or 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 so uh, usually, like EnviroTech is the supplier that we buy them from. But the, we have two different types of garbage trucks in New Way and Ohio. Do you um, have a contact that you just ask why we're we're having this issue? Why would these garbage packers be losing all this glass? Uh, Dean already touched on it. It's, it's mainly the trucks are aged, they're wore out. Um, you know, at, at so you the, don't think it's the newer ones? It's actually the, correct. The, yep. the, the, yeah, the box it, itself. Correct. The yeah. gaskets, the seals, everything gets wore out. I mean, you're, you're dealing with an abrasive material, much like Dean touched on, and the stuff's not going to last forever. And we're finding out ourselves. I mean, we used to stretch our garbage trucks out 10, 12 years. Well, they're beyond wore out at that time. You can back them down to you know every eight years. I mean, the trucks take a beating. I mean, they're driving, stopping, and starting 300 times a day at each at each location, and there's a lot of moving parts. So to keep the truck sealed tight it is one thing. It's it's one thing to just keep the truck on the road so it can continue to pick trash, much well, less keep the trash in a tightly sealed container. So when they unload, does, does the back just open up and they dump? Or how do they unload? Or do they have a... Different trucks work different ways. Oh, the conveyor that pulls it. Some have through. walking floors. They do. Some tip. So, so there's a variation besides. Okay. Right. Okay. Enough of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? What was I just saying? I'm going to invent an electric truck like street sweeper, just like the thing that comes to floors at Costco. Like driving. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Nobody has workers wearing his hat. You just need everything to be electric. That's just flat, right? Throw a camera on there. It can be doing like surveillance at the same time. <laughs> you say that, probably will be there someday. Electric sweeper just yeah. go off on its own. Uh -huh. road. Exactly. Yep. That would be perfect. It would. Um, any? Do we need a motion on this? Do we want to give direction to staff? Um, Dean, I want. Tracy, to can I can I just share a couple things real quick? Go ahead. Yep. Awesome. I'll lower my hand here. Uh, thank you, Dean, for coming as well. Um, just um, as a, a preface, um, so Well convenes a group called the Greater Green Bay Active Communities Alliance. This is a group of over 40 stakeholders from across our community to really try to work to create an active, connected community. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we saw this come on the agenda for Ashwabnon, uh, I did reach out to that group just to see if anyone had any experiences around kind of that uh, South Broadway, Hanson Road, Pilgrim Way place. And so I just wanted to share, because there were two folks who's, who couldn't make it today, but I wanted to make sure that their voices were part of the conversation too. Um, one had said uh, they they often well they've had flats there several times and when they drive in that when they ride their bike down that roadway um, they actually often have to get out of the bike lane and go into traffic to avoid a lot of the glass 
um, and so that they don't get more flats um, on their bikes. Um, and then another group had said, you know, they've just started avo they started avoiding riding there altogether because the glass on the bike lanes have just been too much. So I just wanted, it's nothing that hasn't been shared yet, but I wanted to make sure that I did share those two comments that we did receive um, from members of that committee. And, you know, from the conversation, it does sound like because there are many different municipalities involved, you know, knowing how light glass is, right? Even if, you know, one group is doing their part and, and, and sweeping that, you know, if we don't have good continuity there on uh, some of those other places, you know, glass is so light and with traffic moving back and forth, I, I can, I'm, I'm guessing that it easily can move back and forth and, you know, glass doesn't necessarily know those municipal bounds. So that might be part of kind of what's happening. So I would, um, I would be in favor of, of looking at how to connect those municipalities together and think about like a comprehensive strategy there. So thank you. Thanks, Anna. All right, any other questions or do we need a motion or do we want to make a motion or just... Um... Do we have to do a motion for Joel to have contact with the county or can you just do that? Either way, it, it, it's fine. I mean, if, if you would like uh, to make a motion recommending staff work with um, Dean and his staff, as well as Mount County Highway, and then report back to the committee. That, that'd be a fair motion. Sounds good to me. So, is that your motion? Sure, that sounds okay. good. <laughs> good okay, one to second. Good. That. Right. Yeah. I'll second it. Second by Kyle. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Dean, for yeah, coming. Thank you very thank much. You. Morgan, thank you for coming as well. Morgan is one of our Mount County. Um, Supervisors as well, and is on the resource recycling board with me. Thank you. 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 Thank list. Um, in your packet, you received a cover letter from Joel and then also a document um, with all the working projects that we have that look something like this. So this one you see, for those of you that have been on the we had this similar type document for vet So I will turn it over to Joel and to Ryan or whoever. And yes, I'll start us off. So if you recall last month, there was a conversation on the, uh, the agenda about projects that were identified in the uh, comprehensive biking plan, which I think Kevin shared, and uh, we made hard copies. Uh, Ryan, being relatively new, less than a year um, in his tenure, went through that bike and pet plan and identified the specific <coughs> projects that were identified in that plan wanted to put together kind of a priority list of projects that should be completed minimally over the next five years. So this committee may not be aware of it, but in the past, the village has had what I would call kind of a loose capital improvement plan. Every department has had their own kind of capital improvement plan in and of itself. Uh, Rex in particular he has a very comprehensive capital improvement plan for all of the park projects. It's based on a variety of factors, Parkour, park plans, and so forth. That was his his list. Uh, the ADA plan, right? He's, he's got probably 30 years of the projects plus very detailed set of plans. Doug had a plan when Doug was here as far as some infrastructure projects, equipment, public safety kind of had their own thing. But the bottom line was everybody kind of had their own list of projects, and none of them really kind of coincided with one another. From a standpoint of prioritization. So it was a really difficult, I think, at times for the elected body to really to decide what, what are we capable of accomplishing year over year. And the bike and head uh, committee was really kind of no different. So this list that you have in your packet is similar to other lists that other departments and agencies for the village that had that they had. So it was a list of projects that were identified in the bike and head plan but then a running list of projects that had been identified over a series of years from the committee and maybe staff members. Uh, and it just kind of kept this perpetual list in motion as a, as a you know, to the projects. So Brian wasn't fully aware of this list and many, and some of you weren't aware of this list either after the last committee, so we kind of called and requested that 
behind the scenes. Uh, and Kelly and Rodney found the list and, and distributed it to the group. And then from there, we really kind of identify projects within the list that we would want to set as a high priority. So after Brian, Rex, and myself met um, for the direction of the committee, um, we looked at the list, and obviously it's, it's very comprehensive. There's, there are a lot of projects that are identified. Uh, some of them may be duplicates, and we need to kind of review that and complete that. Uh, but what we wanted to do with the committee's direction at the last meeting is go through this list, identify the project's budget impact. I think, uh, Kim, you may have mentioned that at the last meeting, but it would be really nice to understand what the, the financial impacts are of these projects. Um, but then also prioritize this list so we kind of have an idea of what, what should be top priority and then work their way down. So staff, we met a few weeks back and we, we basically came up with the idea that over the next month, we would like to go through this list individually, internally, if you will. We would like to identify the project's budget impact under three categories, low, medium, high. Because at this point, without having a really defined scope, it's going to be a little bit difficult to pinpoint an exact dollar amount. Uh, but we should be able to at least identify if it's a low, uh, low cost project. And by that we mean somewhere between zero and a hundred thousand dollars. A medium impact project, so it'd be about a hundred thousand dollars to two hundred and fifty thousand. Sharon, unfortunately, we have to leave that door open. Okay, sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. It is an open meeting, so no, no worries. Um, or a, a high a high project, so a quarter million or better, right? So these are gonna be how we're gonna break it down. And then from there, we would like to identify each project by a priority, so meaning one through five, okay? And then um, with that, uh, a priority label number one would mean it's a critical project or mandate, meaning it's mandated by law, regulation, some other higher authority is telling you you have to do it, right? Um, or we've identified that it is an absolute immediate health and safety issue. Um, if you were to look at it from like your DOT standpoint, there's likely to have been fatalities involved from not having the infrastructure in place. Unfortunately, sometimes the DOT says it needs more than one fatality. And so they have to kind of add up before they get to that, depending on the size of the project. Um, uh, priority label number two would be a high priority or it's essential. So we've identified that it's a health safety issue. Maybe they were not dealing with fatalities and loss of life. But it, it, it's a concern. Um, it may affect village operations or services at a high level. Um, but really kind of look at it as it doesn't necessarily need to be done next year, but maybe within the next two or three years. So it, it's a high priority next five years, certainly within the next year. Uh, priority number three would be a strategic priority. So in all likelihood, it shows up in the planning document, it shows up in the strategic plan or complements or objective within the strategic plan. Uh, maybe it doesn't need to be done in the next one, two, or three years, but definitely in the next five years. We it's a key part of the strategy. Uh, priority level number four would be an acceptable project. So it's, it's more desirable than it is necessary, but we've agreed as a group, if you will, or you've agreed as a group that this is an acceptable project, one that should be on our list at least. Uh, and then a number five would be a project that we should, it, it can stay on the list, right? Because we talked at last meeting that sometimes some of these projects are kind of wish list items. So it's a wish, it can stay on the list, but it's definitely future consideration, right? Um, and so we've identified those priority labels. And then ideally what we'd like to do and present to the village board is a true five-year capital improvement. So we take all of the projects from all of the departments, including this project list, prioritize those amongst all of the various competing interests, and identify which ones are going to be completed in the next five years. And so what, what year should they be completed in? And the reason why we want to do that, too, is that there could be a, a substantial amount of projects listed here that could result in multiple years of effort. So as an example, the Lombardi Access Road project. That, that probably couldn't be, I, I guess it could, but 
realistically it can't be done in one year, right? It's going to span a couple different fiscal periods in order to successfully complete it. Meaning, like Brian's going to need to engage with heirs. Heirs needs to begin the preliminary design phase. There could be right of way issues. So now, if there are, we may have to get involved in acquisition. We've done right away acquisition that could take months, maybe even a year to do because you have a holdout. We're dealing with all another gamut of issues because eminent domain is no longer on the table for these types of projects. So that's another issue. Um, but then you have to actually do the construction. And Lombardi Access Road is a large enough project with a full reconstruct where that's probably a full construction season of work. Um, so you can see it could take two or even up to three years to successfully complete a project of that size. The sidewalk on Bart Star, that's like we can design, bid, and, and get that work done in a month, you know, if we really are pushing. Brian's probably shaking his head. Oh, you could. Maybe. I mean, you really got to get it, right? But you see what I mean? It's like some projects based on size, scope, and budget could span two to three fiscal periods. Others could be done in years time. So when we design the CIP, we want to identify that. So we know if we're going to, like Lombardi Access Road, for example, we really ideally should budget for the planning and design work in 2023, and then let's say construction permitting in 2024. So everything's being transparent as far as the sequence of events and activities. Um, so what we want to do internally as a staff is go through this full list. Brian and Rex are going to kind of go through their independently on their end and identifying what project, projects should be the priority over the next five years. Anything beyond that is just beyond that because there's just too much on the list to really focus on it. What we would like from the committee is for you to kind of do the same. You don't have to necessarily go through every project and identify its priority or the year it should be completed, but go through the list and identify the projects that you think are the utmost importance over the next five years. Um, what we would like to do then is for your September meeting is come back with our priorities then so that you can have a list of our priorities and we can compare to what your individual priorities are and then at September's meeting develop a consensus then that will be incorporated into the capital group. And then you folks will come up with estimated costs then? Correct. Okay. Correct. So Rex, you in the past have kind of went through it. And then some of those might be completed. Remember, you used to go through it. There's, you a, would, there's a number that are. Yeah, that you would mark completed. So this is not quite up to date. When I saw this, because I, excuse me, but I missed the last meeting, which you, you guys had some good input there. I'm sorry I did. But my last exchange with Susie was 70 of 22. So there was only like five or six missing from 2022. Yeah. So I have that spreadsheet. And I can pass along if you want to. Take that. It was from seven eight of twenty two. That's the last thing I have where her and I exchanged because she would send it to me and I'd fill it in and share it yeah. back and forth. Um, there were some from twenty twenty two that. Were yeah, completed. yeah, and, and they might be completed too for all I know. But they might we might as well have them in there. I'll, Kelly, you want me to pass it to you? I tried to, I tried to go back for the, for the last couple of years and there's anything we took. We talked about in the bike and pet committee that we said put into put in, into this, what is it? Yep. and then I tried to add it in. So I'm not saying I hit everything, but I oh I think okay. I, I think I hit, and it might not be at the very end. I might have added it in because it's similar or adjacent to one of these other projects. Okay. So just go through it thoroughly before you go making another list, I guess, because they they may be in here. Well, I wouldn't make another list. I'll just give it, give it to you. Just, and yeah. you I'll yeah. look at it, but you can look at it as well. Um, yeah, we don't want to send out another list. No. Yeah, if you can get that to Kelly. Yeah, you can send it to me. Yeah, probably quite a few are around maybe the new balance site, because I think we did quite a few additions to the plan in that area. And, and in I, that know, I, know, I know several of the Bellin sections, we, we broke it out. You know, okay. like Wabi. <laughs> Allied was one of them. Uh, uh, Allied was another one, yeah. and, then, and then we talked about, you know, Oneida Street, and, you yeah. know, going up towards the car dealerships. Yeah. Even though that's kind of off the table at this point due yeah. to the cost and the DOT, but I think those are are in there. 
Are they in there? Okay, I looked too, and I think I saw some of them in there, but I was wondering about that too. So if you can send that to Kelly, that would be great, and then you guys can And I will say, them. obviously, this is from Sue's files, right. yep. so, and it was somewhere in July of 22 that I found this list. So okay. I'm assuming they should be somewhere. And they may be in the yeah, that, uh, you missed this South Point room at one point. That was one yeah, South Point. I, I don't know. I think South Point should be in there. Is it? Was, was it in there? I don't know. I didn't. I, looked I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see it, but I might have missed it. I thought it was bike lanes on both sides of South Point between Cormier and West Yeah, and that's what I know we put in. I but think I, it might be in there. I don't remember. I'll take but a peek in there. before I, I pass it on. And if I spot them, I'll just note that it's already there. Yeah. And if you would like, I can email the actual spreadsheet document to each of you. So right now you obviously you only have the PDF that was included in the packet. So I can send the actual Excel spreadsheet if you're savvy enough to, to use Excel and want to use it that way to prioritize or at least you know, yeah, to get a list of things you'd like to see, that would be that'd be fine. I can do that. The other thing I'll mention too is and I think you already mentioned the completed aspect of it, there may be projects in on this list that have been completed. But for whatever reason it just doesn't indicate that or just needs another like confirmation of that. The other thing I've noticed is that there may be projects that are similar in location, but maybe I wish I had an example that I should have marked. But as an example, like Oneida Street by the Bellin project, I think there are a couple different references to that area in projects and. If it makes sense to you, feel free to do that. Just combine them, or you know, consolidate those two things because you wouldn't necessarily do them separately anyway. When I notice that, so if you look at Project Twenty One, for instance, it is also Project Forty Seven. One's pedestrian, one's bike, but it's the exact same area. It's a pedestrian overpass, and that could be combined. Yeah. And the same thing with I think Twenty Three was another one that was combined with maybe it was Forty Eight. So those two were similar in what they're saying, but one was pet and one was bike. So maybe putting them together might make sense. I'm sure when we made this list, we looked at it from the bicycle aspect and also from the right. pedestrian aspect. Right. Yeah. And they can they can remain separated, but just yeah. just bear in mind that if you're going to prioritize them, they're they're likely to be done in the same year yeah. or series yeah, of years. Yeah, because it's the same yeah. project area at least potentially. And so that was the intent behind the sort. So these you know, the spreadsheets, because you can sort by we, we divided it into what four territories. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so if you like pick number two, and I think you could get sidewalk and pedestrian all, you know, together. But yeah, be, because you would just select region rather than region oh, okay. and facility type. Okay. Rather than trying to cons. Trying to put all that stuff together. Yeah. Um, if we want to do that yeah. in a separate. So if everyone can look at it before our next meeting and just think for the next five years what priorities you think will be there. You don't have to worry about the cost of them, just say these are things we've been talking about, these are things that are important, and then maybe even rank them. You know. And maybe we don't put like we want this year, this year, this year. We just rank them, and then these gentlemen can figure out how they fall into the capital improvement plan. So we're just saying these are the ten top things that I see, or projects that I see, and that way we're giving feedback to you gentlemen, and you can see how it fits into the capital and yeah. ignore the cost and let them right. tell us. Right. And yeah, they, well, we can't sure. put the ten million dollar project in twenty twenty four. Yeah, well they they you do have that criteria here, the one through right. five. So we could you know certainly we, that way. Yep. Uh, yeah, we need to we decide which ones are ones and which ones are fives and what's in between. And, yep. and okay. if we if we rank it as a one, that will in essence say we want that done right away. That's a high yeah. priority. Yeah. And here you guys are looking at it at self point is not in here. So yeah, I we take on this, but slow okay. Add that in. Okay. So are you going to edit this a bit before we get it back? Or is it we're taking it as it is right now? 
I we can look at it and make sure that the projects like South Point get in there, and then when we send it out in the Excel, it'll be kind of a rough form. But then when it comes back to you for next month's meeting, it'll be a clean copy of just the projects that we've identified. So it's going to be this list will continue to exist, but we're going to just summarize and identify the projects that should be done in the next five years, and then you're going to you're going to tell us how good of a job we did at prioritizing or how bad of a job. We did. So, so you want us to prioritize these, and we're going to compare your work with our work in yep. the next meeting. Yep. But you'll get out a new one that includes South Point, and maybe some of the ones Dale had on that maybe did not get on this we'll list. Double check that. Double check that, and then send us out a new one, and then everyone will get that. If you see something, if you see something that's missed. Yep. Shoot, shoot. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll review it. I'll review it for send it. So the only other question I have is for it, and you can do this, Kelly, if you want. I would add a column for the one, two, three, four, five. So they can write a number in there, right? Sure. Or if they can do it on the computer, on their own computer, yeah. they can put a number in there, yeah. right? And then we got a column for the number and we're prepped when we, yeah, when it comes when to the meeting. Okay. Sounds fair. Everybody feel comfortable with that and feel like you can do that. And just call Joel or Brian if you have any questions or Rex and they can do it too, but otherwise that would be great. You can do your homework before our next meeting. There's a column here that says budgeted funding source. There's no data in any square. <laughs> yeah, that was a column that I had. Oh, okay. yeah. So that, that'll be something that we do um, okay. as we're going through our synopsis. So as an example, is this going to be a general funded general fund funded project or is it going to be a TIF tax incremental finance district funded project? That is likely going to be a pretty good determinant okay. as to whether the project gets done or not. Okay. If it's in the TIF, it's usually okay because we'll have increments to pay for it. If it's a general fund project, it may become okay. Do you think maybe in that budgeting funds column, put something about grant eligible or not grant eligible? If there's projects that we think we can get grants for, sure. just list that in there, you know, whether it's a CAP grant or a DNR grant or whatever, just to. That's another funding source to look into at least. Yep. The other question I have, and for Brian, I guess, um, every year you guys go out and look at the votes and you rank them one through five or whatever it is, and you have a criteria that you use. Have you ever heard, or do you think it's reasonable for something like that to be done with our trail system? So every year, every other year, someone goes out and looks at our trails and says, okay, this section from here to here really needs to be redone, or this mm -hmm. section is rated a one, or this is a three. And we start budgeting regularly, whatever amount it is, let's say it's $500,000, that we're going to budget every year for trail upgrade and maintenance. Um, because the trails fail just like our roads do, they probably last a heck of a lot longer. But that way, we're keeping up with them, and we're having money set aside. Have you ever done anything like that in any of your communities? Has anybody heard of anything like that, or is that like unique or nothing that we would do? No, I, I don't think. I mean, we, we did use a system very similarly, I read as I was leaving the previous municipality I was at, um, just to get a better handle and prioritize you know, where the needs are. Um, could you use the same system, the, the PACER reading system? Yeah, you could, absolutely. Um, it's just someone would obviously have to find the time to go through and Go, go down all the trails and, and look at them all. Um, all the time. Yeah, just just the roads alone are, you know, about 103 miles between Steve, myself, and Lee and I. It's about three weeks worth of work. So, how do you do? You guys have like currently like a depreciation scale or something that when you're putting something in like this part of the trails redone that it automatically goes on. And it's anticipated the last eight years, like you said, that automatically goes back on. Is that something that they do? No, no there there is. Funding wise, no, there isn't. Um, not that I'm aware of anyways, Joel, well, there's some sort of depreciation cycle for our streets. Um, and honestly, you could do something like that. The challenge is, is how well was it constructed? Yeah, how, how well is it used? Um, there is kind of a, a general, you know, guideline that they'll give you, but it really depends on how the quality of the construction. I will say that Brian and I, uh, what, weeks ago we, we walked the whole industrial park trail between West Main and Wabi wow. from, from end to end. Interesting. 
just to take a look at it and <laughs> some of the issues and gotta get off your seat on that one once in a while. <laughs> Got to get off your bike seat on that one once in a while. <laughs> That's why they walk, right? Yeah. Yeah. You should bike it too, just to get some easier talk when you're walking. <laughs> <laughs> Brian and I do bike it. Yeah. yeah. I will so, say though. So yeah, we I, we got actually a call into Northeast Asphalt. We've talked with I talked with Northeast and and we're going to be getting a price estimate and seeing where we're at and potentially looking at putting that through for the budget cycle. So. See where that goes. Is that typically how it works in Rex? Is you kind of you realize that this has to be an end, but you, you propose it in that budget that next year or whatever, rather than like you were saying a maintenance type. For, right. for the budget. trails, that's the way it's been done. Okay. It, you know, but but there's there's also the long range capital improvement plan. I mean, right you know, you could you could make that a hundred pages long because every every piece of concrete every tree every everything in every single part we have could be in that plan so you got to kind of pick and choose how to how to do different different things otherwise you're, you're just so you need a plan to have all those trees taken down What's that? <laughs> no. that wasn't in your plan to have all these trees have to be taken down oh my gosh wow. i think that brings up an interesting point one of the things that this list does not do and i do not agree with is identify maintenance issues so the industrial park trail if we had to reconstruct that section of trail, our packer ramp, for example, is a decent length of trail. Yeah. That's a high cost. That's going to be a high cost now. And it's not identified here. And so we're that's where that CIP is going to come into play is okay, you got all this list of shiny new stuff, but what about all of our existing stuff that we maintain our current on the industrial park trail itself since I've been here, we've we've probably done five what I consider major, I don't say reconstruction, but Worked on five sections of that trail that got undercut, where where where, where sewer pipes underneath washed out, where the trail buckled or spalled or so, so something happened, and, and I want to say each one of them was at, at a minimum five thousand, some of them ten thousand, or or even maybe a little bit above, and, and that just comes out of park and rec general general, general budget away from something else that needs to sure. be fixed at a different park, you know, but because it's a a safety issue, it, it, it rises to the top pretty quickly. Gotcha. Okay. Can I ask you what number 48 is? That's 72. Oh, it's actually putting in a price confidential your path attaching it to the 172 bridge. On the oh, I mean, yeah. So, yeah, and yeah. LA has it in their plan as well. And you know what, ironically, when that bridge was built back in, I have no idea how long ago, and maybe Leroy can attest to this. They had a vote at the county board. No, I, I used to bike that trail. I mean, I used to bike the concrete from Babcock down to the bridge. Yeah, I, I remember yeah. playing on the hay bales over on Broadway as, as a kid when they were building 172 that second. So yeah. I, I want to say that bridge went in probably a, a, about 70. 73, 74. Yeah. Around. They looked at that time when they were building a bridge, they were going to put a bicycle and pedestrian path on there. Mm -hmm. It got defeated by one vote. Oh. So that bridge could have had a bike and cut plant, you know, access on it since 1970 something or the other if we had one more vote. So, but that's, yeah, that's an alloys plan and that also, Eshelman on has put it in their plan for if they ever rebuild that or look at it in the future. Hey, and I'm new around here, but I just want to thank all of you. When when we talk at these committee meetings, I feel like you listen and respond and come back with things. And I, I just really appreciate your attentiveness to that. It's just an observation. We appreciate you too. <laughs> <laughs> and you're insightful. <laughs> All right, any other questions on me for the bicycle, the task list? Everyone understands their homework and that you guys could do it. And like I said, please reach out to Joel, Rex, or Brian if you have any questions or you That's know, not you like give to you a project and you're like, what the heck is that? Please ask, you know. But just do your best and see what you come up with. Do I'll do my best to answer because some of them through to me are, are new. <laughs> I, this is the first time I've seen this, so some of them have been like, oh, all right. Well, yeah. 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 It would take more time, so I'm not asking this, but if it wouldn't have taken more time, what I would ask is what are the things you'd put as future aspirations and power? 
That's up yes. to us. We tell them what our future aspirations are. But but they could offer their opinion right. and then their rationale around that because they've got this whole the whole thing picture that put all together. together. Yeah, the departments. Yeah, so departments working together and yeah. No, I'll, I'll do my best not to speak on behalf of the board. But if there's a situation where, as an example, you want to put all your eggs in one basket, that I feel like the board is probably going to say no to. I'll I'll advise you to that. I interact with our board, and I think you want some success here at this committee too. So getting something done is better than nothing. Right? Yeah. So if you're looking at adding a pedestrian overpass over the Fox River <laughs> in 2025, yeah. I don't think that that one's going to happen. So I'll be realistic about it. It's not that, and we'll always be realistic about that. And Oneida Street's a really good example of that, where. It was designed the way it was designed in the early 2000s. For whatever reason, the leadership um, here and, and at the county and at the DOT, when they did that interchange, they excluded it. They put everything on the north side. Bringing back that concept onto the south side is going to be pretty financially challenging to do that. Is it right? I'm not here to debate that. I'm just here to tell you that it's very financially challenging. So. Realistically, it's probably not going to happen unless you have one of those like really su substantial health and safety issues, right? It's just that's the reality of it. All right. Do we need to get the? I don't know how your meeting ended up last time, but hold them away with the changing the lines. Um, we're going to talk about that a little bit here? next, but the, we're going to talk about that a little bit on oh. the next agenda item. Oh. Um, any other questions on this? Everyone okay with it? We will go on from there, so please look through that and ask questions if you have any. 8C is information discussion on the City of Akron's Smart Streets program. You mentioned this last time. Um, I did reach out to the City of Appleton, and um, I don't know, if Haley, if you could pull up the document from right. Appleton, or, or Joe, oh, I said, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but as you well, mentioned sure. at the last meeting, I um, I did reach out to public works director and Appleton, and I was like, okay, I guess she's going to um, go through it with me. But Appleton just did um, a road diet, if you want to call that, on College Avenue. And they put this information, Smart Streets, out on their website, kind of letting people know what they did, why they did it. Um, you know, their before picture, what it looks like after. Um, they talk, you know, in the middle about, you know, the new road already design will develop a multimodal corridor that will enhance the outdoor experience, support local businesses, and bolster a welcoming downtown. And then they had the little graphics, the safety access growth that this type of configuration will lead to those types of things. And then it just kind of goes through the project benefits on the bottom, you know, safety, you know, we've talked about this a little bit, you know, reduce, reducing crashes out there. Um, Cole did talk about that on his report, his initial report. It improves the pedestrian experience and makes it easier for people to cross. It's a smoother traffic flow, less aggressive driving because you can only go as fast as the vehicle in front of you because there's one lane. Um, the right and left turn issues that against Cole, Cole had talked about. Um, it provides more access for people moving by things other than motor vehicles. Um, and then improves pedestrian sidewalk experience because the cars aren't right up next to the sidewalk. Um, the growth, you know, makes a more livable and pleasant community for people as they're moving through the area. Slower speeds improves, allows motorists, motorists and everybody else to see what's going on down there. So as you're going through, it's easier to see what businesses are there and where you can stop. Um, so it's just what they had put together. Like I said, I, I'm going to hopefully talk to the public works director so we get some input from her on how everything moves through, what issues they had to, you know, go through any discussions they had with um, other stakeholders and see how all that went. But this is just, you know, just another document kind of to let you know um, of another a community that did do um, a conversion from four to three and the information that they put out about it and the things that they saw were benefits um, of reducing um, the lanes in that particular area. Well, has anyone been down downtown Appleton since they've done this? I have not. I haven't. I've been wanting to ask the last weekend. I missed it. Right day. Oh, what did they say? <laughs> July 9th? You can't make it up. Right? 
You did go? <laughs> Try. Yeah, I, missed, yeah, I, missed. I thought they had, I, I don't know how I missed the date, but we really were down there and I was like, oh, let's go look. And they hadn't done it. Oh, they hadn't done it yet. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was all in construction. You're like, oh, no. Well, is it done? It is done now, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Yep. Um, okay. I've seen some Facebook posts from different, some bicycling groups, some professors at the university there that have said they really like it slowed down it's a very good thing you know so i've just seen some you know minimal things about that but um but it hasn't been that long i mean it's maybe been a month a month and a half of that i don't know if it's even been that long that they've had that new design out there so you yeah. can see because they've had students hit across somewhere yeah yeah so so, so yeah just another informational sheet, sheet on home run and dale your question last month we talked about home run as well um and just kind of gave again more information. Um, Joel had found a community in St. Paul that yeah, Joel died sure that and shared that, that as good. well. Um, so just to get the information out there, we haven't taken any steps to go any further yeah. from here. And at some point, we probably would. I know. I don't know if it needed to be on there. Yeah, I know that Willow was talked about helping with maybe uh, FAQ, and that's why I'm wondering if Appleton has an FAQ that we could use as we're talking to people as we're talking. Businesses along the corridor, and just saying, here's the answer to that, whatever, just to answer questions for people. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping that Appleton has something like that we can kind of use and just speak a little bit. Um, so, again, just another informational thing for you. Um, and please keep your ears open if you hear anything, any feedback on it, or if you're down there, what your thoughts are. Um, as I, I think that Appleton's results are going to have a tremendous influence as to. Whether this project happens or not, or what happens here. If it's successful in Appleton, there's going to be less resistance. If Appleton has problems, it's going to be hard for us to do it. So, yeah, yeah. it's close enough time. For sure. So, we have to we really have to see how it works at Appleton. We have to see how it works through the winter and into next year. Yeah. And then educate people yeah. on the advantages right. and disadvantages because that's well that's the thing to you know people have questions and if they don't understand it yeah. trying to get good information and answering the questions yep. and it's not everyone's not going to like it you know that yeah. and some people are going to really be concerned about it and some people are on board right from the start you know everyone's different but getting information out there and good information that people can easily understand i think is, is the key because that's a change you know it's no different than any change and trying to get Good information out there, I think, is what we need. And you know, good information always, always sounds that's bad. You can't let bad get going. You gotta have some good to say, okay, I understand that, but here's actually what it is. So I think that's important to do that too. So, so yeah, just just informational for you guys. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions on that. Otherwise, that really was what that was all about. Just some more information from Appleton. And when I get a hold of Danny and have a chance to talk to her. Um, the public works director down there, then I will, I'll share that. And then I'm hoping to talk to the business community down there because they, I guess, were involved with it as well. And they have a, a, bid, a business improvement district, I think, in College Avenue, and they were kind of involved in the whole process too. So I think to it's see perfect. So where they like were at and what they were on electric yeah. bikes and like Green Bay do it first and then see yeah. how, it, how it works out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Getting that close to us. All right, nothing else, any agenda items for next one? Just yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if we want to bring something up with, I know we have a, the Dirk was coming from the schools or not, or I'm happy to talk to Andy, they who does some stuff with it, but um, I wonder, I think it would be worth looking into some of the education for bike and pedestrian safety in the schools, just because um, my own children, granted they don't listen to me, so it wouldn't surprise me if it was set at school and they didn't hear them, <laughs> um, but it was actually the whole softball team, we were like, all of us as parents were kidding around with them. We couldn't believe that had the majority of the girls in the softball team had no idea that they're supposed to walk on a different side than they're supposed to bike on. And I guess that blew nope. my mind because nope. I thought, nope. like, I remember nope. learning that in gym class. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that's something like we want to do with like the education there. And then also, I was just going to bring up like with the electric scooters because I can tell you the sports seasons are going in and as a parent and working. There are a lot of kids that take electric scooters to and from their sports activities, and I know the village has been kind of worked on if they like them, don't like them, whatever. But from a bike and ped standpoint, I think the reality is that they are in the village and they're not going anywhere. So I think addressing safety with the kids that are going to be using them, I'll be honest, mine included, like 
they're everywhere. So I just feel like at this point we need to pick our battles. And I think educating them to make sure they're doing it safely would be worth our time to put some energy into it. Maybe we should have brought that up with Brian Murphy too, because why is an officer? I don't. Do they get an opportunity to actually talk to the children? Or? You know, they do the bike. Oh, they no. do the bike every year. Oh, no. But even like the walk to school, like they have the days, the designated ones for walk and bike to school. Yeah. I'll be honest, like even the Frogger one, that's the second day of school. That's the last thing that even the kids or parents are paying attention to. To be honest, you're all just getting back in the routine of it. And then a lot of times the, those, the days for school stuff, it really depends on how, like, are they coming home? They We used to get flips home with the kids saying they had them the last few years. We don't. I don't even hear that it's going on until the kids come home and my daughter's like, hey, I got this today for, you know, walking to school. And I'm like, oh, okay, but like, we don't necessarily know. So I don't know, just like through time. And again, there's been turnovers of principals and things like that at Valley View where my kids went and now I was at the middle school. But like if some of that education piece or maybe just like it loses momentum or just needs maybe a fresh start. Like I said, there's like 14 girls on the softball team and I think like four out of the 14 <laughs> like we're all like all the girls were like huh <laughs> i was like that just blew my mind so like i said my own included i was like mortified i was like what do you mean you don't know that all i tell you that all the time she's like well i just thought you said that i know it was like an actual thing and i'm like no that's like a red make this up like that's she thought that was like a mob rule like, no, that's a very like that's what she calls so it was like mob rule like, no that's a real rule. like yeah, you know, like, yeah. i didn't just make it up so i don't know like well, i said I if we want to talk to the school or maybe like i said i can I know, like, I'm happy to bring up the Andy Day too, but I just thought. I know one of the things that years ago, there was a Safe Routes to School grants that schools could get, and Ashwam and I did get one, and they did a lot of education, whether it's walking or biking. Yeah. I don't know if they have a Safe Routes to School grant still, if they're still doing those. I thought they lumped them into something else now. Um, but yeah, education through the schools is not there for Bike and Pad anymore. It just, it's like one of those things that. They just forget about it. and it's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, and even like I know, like in middle school and high school, they like ride the bikes. Like it's like a session yes, for PE, and I think like I think that's awesome they get it. But I just think like my kids are younger than that, so by the time they're that age, I would hope they already know a lot of those things. Or yeah. I, don't know, I just thought it was worth mentioning. Like so I can't yeah. believe how many like if you go to a softball practice, I'm sure Rex, you guys got to see it all the time at the parks. I mean, there's it looks like a they're not bird scooters, but that's essentially the equivalent of yeah. they're all lined up because that's how half the kids yeah. get to practice the football team right now because it's right across from like, where I am at work. I mean, you would not believe how many of those, and I get it because half those kids, they got to be there for workouts at six in the morning. I can tell you, like, I'm sure there's a lot of parents that are like, I'm not, yeah. well, they, right, they just, the well, kids, that's, right. that's, that's like their, mode. Like yeah. right, yeah. but that's their mode of transportation. Now, I mean, I think half the on the football team yeah. probably is, I'm assuming it's freshman JV before they're driving. Yeah. That's how they all are getting to and from practice. At Woodside, I can tell you we have multiple employees that are like 14, 15 years old in our dietary departments. That's how they come to and from work. Yeah. Like it's just becoming more and more of a thing. And I just think yeah, to continue to pretend like school, it's not it happening. Yeah. Always came to our meeting. Yeah. Rex and I did more for this year. Yeah, he did. We've been talking about this for how many years? Yeah. With you guys right. longer than me. About, you know, yeah, well, not electric scooters. I got scooters going up and down my street all the time. I'm just talking about instructing how to instruct right. yeah. people. Yes. I, and and adults you know, don't do it already. They just, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know, see adults going on their bike all the time. Yeah. It's because we've lost that ability to teach people. The parents are teaching their kids to teach it wrong because they think it's that way also. Mm -hmm. So, somewhere in the education got to get going. So. Yeah, I mean, we can certainly put it on the agenda. So, so next just, month. just, just yeah. as an update, because there are some questions before regarding the Safe Routes to School grants. So, really, it looks like the Safe Routes to Route School program ended in 2013. So, it's been a while, but that's kind of been like what you said before. So, I said it's been moved over into another it's arena. Like that, so, with yeah. that, that's what the TAP grants are for. Well, TAP is the alternative program. Okay. So, that kind of covers that. Yeah. Unfortunately, typically with the TAP grant, it, it, it's much broader than specifically safe routes to school, so that the, or the, the money will probably spread out more versus just going to the safe route oh. thing. But that, that's the umbrella that it's underneath right now. Okay. So you're, you'd want to find out who is knowledgeable about the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. yeah, because that's who, like, they're going to have a scope and sequence. There's a more contemporary term for it, but like, 
in third grade in Phi right. Ed, we yeah. teach this yeah. and defined in each school district does that differently. So that's who's going to know your curriculum. Yeah. And that's Andy's the curriculum. Oh, the, oh, that's school right. districts. That's yeah. what I was thinking. If they reached out to him instead of Dirk, it might be more beneficial as opposed to the high school for any right. Just right. Yeah. And he's he's over all of all the schools. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so he works right with um our superintendent that I'm totally blanking on. Kirk, 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 thank you. <laughs> I'm like Kirk and I'm like, no, no, that was Dirk. I can't put them all together. But <laughs> Kurt and Kirk. yeah, so but I know he wants to get he's the curriculum director for last year too, but we reached out to him and it might be more successful yeah. than well, when we talked about the education portion of the bike friendly community thing, so maybe you know that kind of ties together to a certain degree. But I think I agree with you, the education part is important for the school, so that's really so if it's agreeable. I think Kim sent me contact information at Western Pier, so I'll reach out to that individual and see if they can point me in the direction of the curriculum director. Yeah. And then if I can speak with Andy, yeah. I'll invite them to the next meeting. Maybe they can provide an overview yeah. of like ed education in the two districts. Yeah. Our next meeting, I believe, is September 11th. Yeah. That is that might a not week be, after. That might not be a great time. Yeah. So just an FYI, know. maybe they'll go in October. I don't um, think it's the best thing. I think that would be Yeah. Fine. And then what I can do is, because we've had some internal conversations about this uh, movement of our trails, hikes and these scooters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talking about on trail sidewalks, roads. I can have our public safety group look at that. They can certainly describe what our current ordinances mm -hmm. permit and then what current traffic code permits. And then we, from there, I think we'd have a good understanding of what we can and can't do. Um, so I can bring that back um, to the group. And then obviously we'll have the conversation on, the, on that list on the project list. So that yeah. is, can we also put on the agenda to talk about winter maintenance clearance for the trails? We had talked about it, and Brian gave a report. Uh, we talked about maybe adding some trails. Okay. So okay. if we could maybe put that on the agenda and, and look at that and see maybe you want to quote, add another piece of trail or whatever. Um, so look into that as well. Okay, so next agenda then we'll do the test list. We'll do the winter maintenance. Anything else? It looks just like and education. When we are working in education, may not be like it'll take off. Okay, so they just plug it in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.